Hi Floss Tube, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, August 9th. It is just about noon here in my neck of the woods. Uh, we're in a new location today. My daughter Allison has been sick for the past couple of days and she is actually reclining um, in the room that I normally uh, do my Floss Tube videos. Um, she is comfortably resting and I didn't want to make her move. She's had a very rough couple of days. Uh, she ended up coming down with a bladder infection, uh, but her side effects were um, nausea and dizziness, and so she um, hasn't been able to really keep anything down. And so we went to the doctor yesterday and they ran a bunch of tests, and that's how uh, we found out that she had a bladder infection. Um, so they were able to give her something for the nausea. She is on antibiotics now, and so hopefully it starts to work soon. I know it does take a couple of days, uh, but I didn't want to make her move. Um, she's very comfortable. She's watching television. Uh, so I thought it's just easier to come out here. The only downside with filming out here is it's not insulated. So you will hear all of the road noise. I live on a busy highway. And so there's a lot of truck traffic and a lot of idiots who like to fly through here at 80 miles an hour. Um, also, I have the back door open, so you will hear the birds because it was very stuffy in here. Um, the weather's been kind of muggy, and so it's a little on the humid side, too. <laughs> um, anyway, so this room here is where I do the majority of my crafting. This is where I do all of my quilting, and in fact, I'm actually standing in front of my quilt machine. It's right here, and this is my quilting table so that is what my camera is on. Um, I spend a lot of my time out here in the fall and so that is why it is kind of decorated because I was tired of just looking at dingy white walls. This is actually technically the garage which I had have converted into sort of my store all my crafts, quilting, and where and there's a table like over here where I do um, all of my finishing and the packaging up for Etsy and so um, I do spend some time out here uh, it is also if it is hot outside it is the same temperature in here as it is outside if it's cold outside it's the same temperature in here so it's cold and hot and sometimes it's not very fun to work out here um, the lighting is also super bright, so it's not attractive lighting. Um, I like to be able to see what I'm doing, and so I have very, very bright white lights out here. Um, so you'll have to forgive the under eye bags, which has been from two days of not sleeping. And um, hopefully you'll just kind of forgive this one video for being in a new location and all the noise that you're going to hear. And um, I did have quite a few things I was... I plan to talk about in this video but um, I think it's just gonna be kind of a short one um, I have some finishes and progress a couple of things for haul and I have uh, uh, the winner for my giveaway from my last video and I also have a new project bag that I made for a giveaway in this video so stay tuned it'll be towards the end as usual um, so I hope you've been well I hope that you have been stitching or creating all the things I know that there is a couple of Instagrammers that I follow who um, have lost their stitchy mojo and I hate when that happens and I definitely feel their pain because I usually lose my stitching mojo right after Thanksgiving, like right in between the end of November, first part of December. It just flies out the window. It's very annoying because there's a lot of stuff I want to do. So I hope that they're able to get their stitching mojo back. I know it will come back, um, but hopefully it will soon. Um, let's see, where do I want to start? Uh, so one of the things I did not want to forget to do in my video, and I, I was supposed to talk about it in my last video, and I totally forgot, and then Deborah reminded me about it because um, it is getting towards the end of summer now, and um, we both, and you know, we talk about, you know, getting, getting, getting the sal information out there in case anybody wanted to join and then that way they would have time to gather up their supplies and the patterns and things like that. So, um, if you've been watching me from the beginning, you know that I have been collecting the Anniversaries of the Heart series by Blackbird Design. I have all 12 of them now. 
And my original plan was January 1st, 2020, I was going to start the first block. And it was going to be my 2020 project. Um, I'm gonna do all of them on one piece. So, I mean, you probably don't wanna see all of these, um, but I have been collecting them since January and I was able to um, get the last two video before last, I think, is when I showed them. So I've had a lot of people um, ask me if they could join me. And of course, I would love it. I mean, it, I never intended for it to be, um, or you know, never really thought anybody would be interested in doing it as a sal. And I guess it never really even, I never really even, you know, thought about it. And then Deborah was like, well, I have those. I'm gonna join you if that's okay. And I'm like, yes, of course. And so then I've had a couple of other people ask if it's okay if they join me. And of course, of course. And so I've meant to say something and I, I just keep forgetting. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm gonna start my Anniversaries of the Heart, January 1st, 2020. It's gonna be my 2020 project. The hope is I will start it January 1st and I will finish it December 31st. It will be a revolt, it'll just be in my, um, my it'll be one of my three projects that I uh, revolve through um, each week or every two weeks. Uh, so if you are interested in joining, I would love it if you would. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I meant to pull the fabric that I'm gonna stitch it on. Uh, however, I forgot. And so it's gonna be 35 count sand. And I just discovered the other day that that piece was actually big enough and it was perfect for it and I went for it. I'm gonna try to do it in the called for, but I don't know that I will because, you know, if you look at a chart and you see that you just have one little, you know, piece that's blue and then the rest of the chart doesn't have this other blue, I'm just gonna, you know, do DMC. I'm not gonna buy a whole skein of thread just for one little flower. So um, I'm planning on starting it January 1st, like I said, um, I forgot what the hashtag was. It's something very simple and I've completely spaced it. So I will make sure to put it in the description box down below. Um, if you're interested, please, I would love for you to join me. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, you don't have to stitch them all on one piece if you don't want to. That's just my preference because I am gonna personalize it um, to my family and my husband's family. So I do have a little bit of research I need to do. Um, and I'm looking forward to this. Um, I'm glad that I decided to do it. It's been something that's kind of been on my wish list for a little while, and I just decided I'm gonna go for it because I saw a couple of finished finished ones, and they're absolutely beautiful. I loved it, and I, I just thought, yes, I need, I'm just gonna do it. And um, I was really surprised when there was interest in doing a sal, so please join me. You can get the charts in a lot of different places. So I bought mine at um, 123 Stitch. Sorry, I moved close there for a second. <laughs> um, I bought mine at 123 Stitch, Acorns and Threads, Jen Stitching Niche, and Sassy Jacks. Um, and I know, cause I actually had Acorns and Threads order two of them for me. So I know that they're able to order the whole series if you just want to order them in one fell swoop. Or if you want to do like I did where I just ordered two a month, um, you just got to kind of look, look around, find the next two that you want and order them that way. But I do know that Acorns and Threads can get them for you. And so I will put a link below to their website um, if you want to just give them a call and have them do it for you. I know that you can sometimes find them used on eBay. And it was actually, I think I was like four charts in when somebody um, listed them on eBay and they were like $50, the whole set. And I was like, dang it, that would have been perfect. So I know you can find them in different places. Um, I didn't have any problem getting them. The only one that was posing a little bit of a dilemma was the farmhouse block. Um, I did find mine at Sassy Jack's and I know they still have some in stock if you want to um, purchase it. I would I would say if you want to start your collection, you don't have any of them, I would tell you to look for the farmhouse block first, the farmhouse and the pumpkin block, because those two proved to be a little tricky, but I was able to get 
the farmhouse block from Sassy Jacks and the pumpkin block from Jen Stitching Niche. So I would, um, you might just have to do a little detective work. So, but I'm excited to start. I would love for you to join. Like I said, it starts January 1st. Um, so I hope you'll join me and Deborah. Deborah's going to do it too. It's going to be one of those forever kind of sales. Um, so of course they will go with basket of cherries and Sally Spencer. So just whenever you want to start it, go for it. Um, and just let us know you're doing it. And <clears throat> I will put the hashtag down below. I will look it up because I know she sent it to me. Um, anyway, so next up, I, so I found two relatively new floss tubers. One of them I found today and one of them, um, I found her like two weeks ago. She bought a project bag from me and then she, I forget how it came about that I discovered that she had a floss tube video. But anyway, I've enjoyed, she has three videos out. I've enjoyed watching her and her name's Jennifer. It's Jennifer Blue Bluegrass Stitchers. Um, I've been, she has three videos out. I've enjoyed watching her videos. Um, she's lovely and she's also on Instagram. Um, her name is Spunky Jen. And so, I mean, she's, she's wonderful. She's, and she always leaves the best comments. Um, and so, uh, and it's not just because she brought, bought one of my project bags, but she is enjoying her project bag and it makes me so happy to hear that she is. Um, so if you are looking for a new floss tuber, uh, go, te go check out Jennifer at Blue Bluegrass Stitchers. And then just today I found a floss tuber um, and that is the Elegant Thread. So I don't know what her name is. I know she lives in Washington, DC. Um, she is very lovely. I'm looking forward to um, watching the rest of her videos because I found number 17. That's the one that was recommended to me. Um, so I don't know if she has any more. I forgot to look to see if it was a recent video that she had just put out, um, but I am excited to go back and watch the rest of them because like I said, she was very lovely. Um, and I'm pretty, I think she's on Instagram too. Um, but if she is, I'll make sure to put that information down below too. Um, but I just found her. Uh, she popped up as a recommended video. And so a lot of times what happens is when I'm sewing, I just let um, YouTube pick the videos. And so I'm able to watch quite a bit of floss tube that way and able to find new floss tubers to follow. And um, also I've been watching while I sew some DIY crafters and they're the ones that they will go to like the Dollar Tree, they will go to um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, the Dollar General, AC Moore, and there's one other place and they'll go and they'll, they'll buy all this stuff, um, like dollar store type stuff and then they'll come home and they'll put these fantastic things together and it's like, oh, it only cost me $10 and it's this fantastic wreath or um, this whole autumn display. They're just, um, so I've kind of been addicted to those. And I did go into the Dollar Tree and buy all of the stuff to make a, um, like an apple wreath. And I just haven't had time to put it together yet. So hopefully in my next video, I'll have that to show for you. Um, but yeah, I've been kind of, I don't want to say obsessed, but I have been watching quite a few of those DIY crafters, you know, just because you can get good ideas too for even your cross stitch finishes. Um, you know, cause they'll just, they just have a way of taking and making these fantastic bows. And it's, you know, you watch it and you're, and you're thinking, man, this thing's going to be like super complicated, but they just put it together and it's so effortless and easy. And you're like, I can totally do that. So I'm excited to give it a try um, because I do like big gingham bows and gingham once again seems to be the end thing for the fall. So I'm very happy it is because I love gingham. So on that note, I'm going to show you some of my finishes. Um, I think in my last video I had this done and it was the August block from Year Celebration, Hands On Design. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I had it finished. I just didn't have it fully finished. And so I was able over the weekend to fully finish it. What I did, so I went to Hobby Lobby and I just bought one of the unfinished wooden 
Um, they had that whole department where they have all the unfinished wood products. So I brought it home and I mean, as you know, um, the inside of my house is very earth tones. And so when I try to take something that is like a solid color and it's like a solid white, solid, you know, just like a solid, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And so what I've been trying to do is when I, you know, when I need to buy something that's new for finishing, I try to um, grunge it up a little bit. So I painted it white and I let it dry. And then I came back a little while later and I have some antiquing um, paint. And I painted over the top of it and then I wiped it and I let it dry. And then I came back with the white paint and I sort of, I made it look like it's like old and crusty is what I was going for. Um, and so I came back in with the white paint and I sort of like, uh, I don't know, just kind of fiddled with it and then went back with the antiquing paint. And my goal was to make it look like that old barn wood um, that you see, you know, when you're driving across the countryside, you see like an old barn that you know was painted at one time white and it's weathered with the years. That's what I was going for. And so I just did it, you know, Priscilla style with the washers. There's a magnet on the back. Um, I did um, three pieces of mat board and I just, um, you know, um, put them all together, glued them with the Aileen's Tacky Glue, and then I just made a very simple bow with a um, Black Eyed Susan in the middle. And so I think it looks really great. Um, it's out and I have it out in my living room. Um, I have a shelf out there and it sits up there. And so the second thing, I finished this last summer and it came, it comes out of the Prairie Schooler Prairie season and it is this summer block. And I finished it the middle of last summer and it, I already had it fully finished and um, I took it down at the end of the season and my intent had been to stitch all of the pieces and, and I just, I haven't got around to it yet, but the board was just plain white and I picked this board up at Michael's in the wood section. And after I finished it, I felt like it just um, stuck out like a sore thumb on the wall and I, I didn't like it. And so since I had already planned to you know grunge up this one, I thought I would grunge up this one as well. And so I did the same thing. It was already painted white, so I just went, put the antiquing um, paint on it, wiped it. Um, you can see it a little bit better. Um, you know, went back over it to give it sort of that distressed age look. Uh, and I think it turned out pretty well. It's just got the, um, the washers and the magnets just, you know, just like Priscilla. And then I gave it a fresh new bow. I already had this bow partially made and then, um, I just went and fiddled with it and added, um, some red gingham. Um, Joann's was getting rid of all of their patriotic... 4th of July ribbon and this and the um, this ribbon was in it and it was 70 cents and it's perfect the only thing I wish I would have done is I wish I would have just taken this back off and redone it in a different color but it's okay I think it looks great I did it all in DMC when I stitched it I'm pretty sure it's the called for DMC so those are the two FFOs I had this past week um, I'm trying to think, yeah, I didn't, I don't think I had any, I don't think I had anything else that I fully finished, except today I did have a, um, in my stitch rotation, I had a finish. Um, so in, uh, let's see, I guess this would be six weeks now I've been doing a stitch rotation. And so what I do is, is on the weekends, I stitch Glitter Village. And during the week, I rotated, this past two weeks, I rotated between Skeleton Crew by the Cricut Collection and Where the Bittersweet Blooms by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I was able to finish, I guess I finished it yesterday. It would have been, so this is what happened. I, yesterday morning, I finished my, um, or I thought I finished, my where the bittersweet blooms this is what it looks like i thought i finished it and so i brought it out and i showed my husband i'm like look i finished it and then i i ironed it and i set it on the table 
and um, I was on the phone with the doctor trying to get Allison an appointment and Brian had come out and he was kind of looking at it and I get off the phone and uh, he's like you didn't finish your your stitch and I'm like what do you mean I didn't finish it and he's like well there's a mistake and I'm thinking dang it just what I need you know I've got all this stuff going on I gotta get Allison to the doctor and he <laughs> He points out my mistake. And so what had happened was, so I finished it, but this motif was up one stitch. It was just up one stitch, but it was enough that, you know, it was off. And I didn't see it. He saw it. So if he saw it, that meant other people would see it too. So um, when I got home from taking Allison to the doctor and she was reclining and um, I was just, you know, hanging out there, I ripped it out moved it down and restitched it. So I'm finally done. If you follow me on Instagram, I did, I posted it this morning. Um, I stitched it with all of the called for. The only thing I didn't um, do the called for was um, these little, I don't know if you can see them very good, these little white ones. Um, it was um, Classic Color Works eggshell and I didn't have that. So, and there's not much. I mean, there's just a couple of them. So I just substituted roasted marshmallow gentle art sampler. And I really love how it turned out. Um, I am in the, um, is it the Dixie sampler exchange for the haunted, I think it's haunted harvest. And so I've decided since my partner or since the person that I'm stitching for likes Brenda Gervais, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the pumpkin and the crow in this part for her. And uh, I think I might, you know, because what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to make, you're supposed to, you know, stitch something and then, you know, fully finish it. And it can be fully finished however you want. And in fact, you don't even have to um, do cross stitch. You can do anything handmade, basically. And so um, what I'm kind of thinking is I'm going to, you know, do just this part and put it in a project bag and send it to my partner. So think that's the route I'm gonna go so I have that finished I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna fully finish it I I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna frame it um, because I feel like that particular one could eventually make it to my sampler wall so we'll see I haven't I think it would have to be just the right style of frame like something like wood worn maybe so I'm gonna look around um, I would like it to, you know, get it framed before autumn because I, you know, I would like to kind of have it out. I have a couple of pieces that I finished last year for Halloween that I never fully finished. And so I really need to be more proactive and, and, you know, getting some of those framed and, and finished. Um, the next thing I worked on, this is Skeleton Crew by the Cricut Collection. Um, I picked this chart up the last time I went to Acorns and Threads. And this is my progress. I think in my last video, I was still working on this guy down here, um, this sale, which I, so somewhere right up in here, I lost count and I ripped it out three times. And on the third time when I still didn't have it stitched right, I just said, we're done and I just so this part here does not look the same as the pattern I feel like I have to tell you I have to be honest about that um, so I've made pretty good progress once I got past this sale which I think this is the biggest sale and so the rest of them are like half the size and so this is my progress so far I guess I'm not used to I'm a little bit farther back from my camera so I I better be this video is just um, I don't know what do you want to say <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit a little bit weird not weird I shouldn't say weird but it's it's definitely not my finest because I I'm not used to this location and so and I'm not used to how my camera is set up so anyway we'll just this is just my pass my free pass video so I'm stitching this with all um, the call for DMC except for um, the moon is going to be stitched in glow in the dark crinic. So, and the moon sits, let's say, the moon's going to sit like over here. So, I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count. Picture this plus 
heritage that I also picked up from Acorns and Threads. So, great progress on that. I should have it done uh, sometime in the next 20 years. So I'm excited for that. And then the last thing that I have been working on is my Glitter Village. Uh, and this is, uh, is it number seven? Yes, house number seven. And so that is my progress. Um, I haven't, so I've worked on this for two weekends in a row, and I think I have five hours of stitch time in it. So I'm using all of the called for except for the bamboo. I'm using 3865 DMC, and it is on a piece of 32 count raw silver, Belfast. So it's got the sparklies in it. I'm totally loving it. Hopefully I can get the house block finished this weekend and move on to number eight. I'm supposed to get together with my quilting friends this weekend and so they will, I shouldn't say, I mean they're quilters but we always work on kind of whatever. It's not necessarily quilting. Sometimes they'll do applique they'll do binding, they'll do embroidery. We just like to get together and hang out. So we just kind of, whatever we feel like working on, that's what we work on. Um, and so since I have finished my um, Where the Bittersweet Blooms, which is what I would have worked on today, I am going to pull, um, I'm uh, participating in an exchange in the Stitcher's Coven, which is a Facebook group and uh, I need to get my small ornament started. And so I think I'm going to do a Prairie Schooler Flight Night. I think that's what it's called. I should have brought it out here. Um, I'll show it in my next video for sure. Um, so I have that that I will probably pull all of the stuff to work on, work on it today. And then um, hopefully sometime next week I'll be able to get that done. And um, because I know that my partner is overseas, so I think that my mail date is like September 15th, I think. And I also think that might be the same time that my um, Dixie Sampler Exchange is also due. I need to really check on that. It's the first time I'm participating in any sort of a cross-stitching swap. So I'm a little nervous because I don't know who my part, I mean, I know, like I know my partner's name, but I don't know who she is. I don't think she has an Instagram. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't, I think I've seen her in the group, um, but I don't know. Uh, so I'm definitely nervous. And I'm also a little nervous about the Dixie Sampler Exchange because all those ladies, they do fantastic work, fantastic, beautiful finishes. And so this is a first for me. I've participated in quilt exchanges, like many quilt exchanges, but I've never participated in a cross stitch exchange. So hopefully, hopefully, um, because I've been in a couple of mini quilt exchanges and the women weren't very nice. I, the last one I participated in, um, which was the last quilt exchange um, I participated in because this woman was nasty to me about what I sent her. And so this is the first time that since that, which has been like three years ago now, that I'm making something and sending it to someone I don't know. So wish me luck. <laughs> Um, so we'll go ahead and we're going to do the haul now. It's honestly, it's not anything to get excited about. <laughs> um, it, I, I picked up Hickety Pickety by With Thy Needle and Thread. I had to get this. I, I was going to cut myself off as far as like buying any more charts because I have a lot and I need to get to stitching. I don't need to buy any more. Mostly what I need is linen and threads. Um, I don't need more charts, but I can't seem to help myself. And then this came out, and it's a chicken pulling a wagon of pumpkins with a witch. It's like the trifecta. And I think in like my first or second video, I said the perfect trifecta would be a chicken, pumpkins, and a witch all in the same piece, and it's right here. And I'm so, so excited, but I am not going to start this until I have my exchange pieces done. So that is my incentive. Uh, because I absolutely love this 
Lots of people are already starting to stitch this. It's so cute. I can't wait. Um, I really do hope I can get this finished by Halloween because I would love to have it out. But um, hickety pickety, buy with the needle and thread. I picked mine up from the Kitten Stitcher because she also had this in her shop. So she, I got an email and she said that she had added a bunch of uh, Brenda Gervais patterns into her shop. And they're ones that um, had not, um, you know, they're ones I hadn't seen. So they're ones that were older charts that um, I hadn't seen before. And so I went in and I took a look. And so I had this, of course, in my shopping cart. And then she, ha she was running like a 10% off Christmas. And so I, I saw this, I fell in love and I, I impulsively bought it. And I've been trying to be a little bit better about um, getting um, Christmas charts because I have, I, I don't want to say I have a lot of Halloween charts, but I, I bet if you took the Halloween fall charts versus all the other ones, I have a feeling that the Halloween autumn ones would win hands down. So I've been trying to be a little bit more proactive about buying Christmas charts. Um, I, I want to say that I'm going to stitch this one this year, but I don't know. I would like to because it is absolutely beautiful and I think it would be great. It doesn't look like there's a lot of stitches, but we always say that. And then the houses like in Lantern Lane take six months. So yeah, so that is all my haul. Um, I've been trying to be really, really good because I do have quite a few that I do need to stitch, but sometimes you just see something and you just, you have to have it in your stash. And also when it comes to, you know, stuff like the Noel sampler, um, I haven't, the only place I had seen it was Pinterest, but it wasn't like I had seen it for sale anywhere. And so I just thought, you know, I should get this one because I don't know how many copies she has. I don't know if she'll get any more in. And sometimes the designers like to retire those old ones. And so I'm like, I can't have hickety pickety travel alone. So those two came together. And I'm happy that I did get it. But I, I do need to be a little bit more proactive about stitching more than buying. So um, I pretty much, unless it comes with a series, like um, I guess I'm not even working on a series anymore. I finished Glitter Village. But, you know, like if I see, oh, no, 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 it's um, the chock full. So the next chock full, when that one does release, of course, I'm going to have to get it because, you know, I've already stitched the sunflowers and so I just kind of need to. Um, and so that's really the only one that, that's the only one I need to buy. And I say that and then I hit the mother load and I end up buying a whole bunch of charts. Hopefully that doesn't happen because what I need, I need linen and I need threads a heck of a lot more than I need charts. So... <sighs> We'll see. So, uh, that brings me to the end of my video and it's giveaway time. So, in my last video, I had this up for grabs and the question was, um, what is your state flower? So, lots, lots of people entered the giveaway. Lots of wonderful answers. I liked reading through all of them. I did read through all of them. I like that the majority of you guys had to pause the video and go check it out. Um, and I do appreciate that. And what was funny is my, so my video came out on, on uh, what, two weeks ago, Saturday. So when you see this video today, it was two weeks ago that my last video came out. And so my husband came out and he's like, you got the state flower wrong. I'm like, no, I didn't. I looked it up. I Googled it. Like I looked it up wasn't like I looked it up in one little place. I mean, I looked it up in a couple of different places before my video. And he's like, no, it's the Oregon berry. It's like a blueberry. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, but it blooms yellow. And so then I had to show him, like, he's like, no, you got it wrong. It's, it's actually a, a, like a blueberry bush. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's this, it's a yellow, it's a yellow flower before it becomes a blueberry. So I showed him, you know, and I had a moment of panic because I thought, oh my gosh, what if I did get it wrong? So I went and I looked it up and it turns out the Oregon berry is poisonous. You can't actually eat it. It looks like a blueberry. You can't eat it. You'll die. And I'm like, wow, that's really, that's really nice of, um, you know, it's like, welcome to Oregon. 
don't eat the Oregon berry, you're gonna die. You can have the other blueberries, just don't eat the ones in the forest. So I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty typical of Oregon. Out of all of the wildflowers they could have picked, they picked the one that's gonna kill you to have as the state flower. Go figure. Um, but uh, I did find out that there's a couple of states and countries where it's illegal to pick the state flowers, or yeah, the state flowers or the county flowers. Some of them you have to get permission. Um, there's a couple of people that answered saying what their state flower was, like Idaho is the syringe. And I don't think I'm saying that right. And I actually thought when I was reading it, it was like an auto-correct, like they put the name of it and then an auto-correct to syringe, but then more people from Idaho said that our state flower is a syringe. They've never seen it. And that there's a couple other states where they name their flower and they said, I've never seen it. Um, some of them, it's a weed, a very pretty weed. Um, the ones that I liked the most, there was like two or three states where their flower is the wild sunflower, and I think one of the um, Canadian, is it a province, was a sunflower, or was it Nova Scotia? I don't remember. And then, um, like in England, it's the Tudor Rose, which I'm a huge fan of the Tudors, and I know all about the Tudor Rose, and I love that, you know, she included like the history of it. So everybody really got into like the the um, festivities of the question, and I, I really appreciated that. I loved reading through all of them. Um, the winner of this project bag is Sandy K. So Sandy, get a hold of me. Uh, you can email me at pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com and send me your address and I will get your project bag in the mail to you. Um, I'm pretty sure she's from Texas and her state flower is the blue bonnet, which I've seen pictures of the blue bonnet and it's gorgeous and fantastic and I wish it grew here. Um, so thank you so much, Sandy, for playing. I appreciate it. Thank you to everyone else who um, entered the last giveaway. Um, I really appreciate it. I love reading through everybody's comments. I just love the support, love the support, all of the things. I just really appreciate you guys. Um, and so now, another giveaway because I can't I can't just not have a giveaway I love it I love to like read through the questions I love the interactions I just really love it so this one also is a project bag and it's this one and I love this one so much I found the fabric at Hobby Lobby love it it's like this is my fall this is exactly everything I love about fall and how could I not with a gingham pumpkin and so that's what the back looks like. I just love it. I love, this is, I'm serious. This is my autumn right here. This is what I love about autumn. Um, so if you would like to win this, um, you must be a subscriber and you have to answer the question, which I will tell you in a minute. Like the video. If you are um, under 18 years of age, you just have to have parent permission to give me your address. Um, don't say giveaway in the comments. I mean, I've seen people like write on their title saying enter our giveaway. So I don't know how much that really, I don't know, but just don't say it. Anyway, so the question is, and this is in honor of my sick daughter, Allison. Um, so when you're sick um, or when you are, you know, you've been sick and you are starting to get better, what is your, uh, favorite comfort food that you like to eat when you've not been feeling your best. Um, for me, I would have to say I like a tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich. And I eat those anyway, not just um, when I'm sick, but I know that when I'm starting to feel better, that just sounds really good to me. Tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, so what is yours? Um, put it in the comment section below. If you have like a really good chicken soup recipe, please email it to me because I would love to be able to make it for Allison. I have looked through tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of recipes, but I'm always afraid to, you know, try it. And so if you have like a tried and true chicken noodle soup or chicken soup or just any sort of a soup for anyone who's just been feeling yucky, email it to me, please. Um, but other than that, just leave your comment sec leave your comment below. Uh, your favorite comfort food after you have not been feeling the best. 
and I will pick a winner for the project bag and announce it in my next video, which will be in two weeks, where hopefully everything is going a little better. So, um, I guess I will leave you here. If I have forgotten anything, let me know. Um, we should be back in the usual location next time, but if not, um, I'll be back out here. Um, so please forgive the outside noise. I think a helicopter is about ready to go over the house. So it's going to get loud because every, for some reason when we have thunder or helicopter, planes go over the house shakes. I don't really understand it. So um, I hope you guys have a great two weeks. As always, um, if you want to know what I am up to, you can follow me on Instagram, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I also have a Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Um, Etsy shop, of course, um, which I don't have any bags to show because the ones that I put in sold out and um, yeah, I'm sorry. Just keep checking the shop, but uh, I'll put all the links below where you can, you know, find out what I'm doing and um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. I'm just rambling now, so I uh, hope you have a great couple of one. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.